Now, direction is pretty easy to see, positive or negative, and form is usually pretty easy to see as well, but strength is one of those things that's a little bit tricky. In the beginning, we're just kind of vague, like strong, very strong, weak, but we actually want to create a very more specific way to analyze the strength relationship, and we do that with actually something called the correlation coefficient. This is a numerical value that actually tells you how strong a relationship is. But there's a couple really important rules. The correlation coefficient is a numerical value that we call R. Why R? Well, there's two R's in correlation, is all I could come up with. But the idea is that it measures the direction, it quantifies the strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. So the rules are that you would only ever even dream of using R correlation to measure strength if your data is linear. So if you see a giant curve in your data, don't ever even think about using correlation. It's only for linear data. And the two variables absolutely positively must be quantitative. You can never even mention correlation with one or both of your variables is categorical. It's actually a very common mistake that you might see all over the place. You'll see people that totally misuse the word correlation They'll say, oh, there's a correlation between somebody's height and their eye color. That's an impossibility because eye color is a categorical variable. Now, there's a couple key aspects. First, I mentioned that it gives the direction. That's because correlation can be either positive or negative. So if it's positive, the direction is positive. If the negative, then the direction is negative. That's pretty straightforward. Now, how does it quantify strength? Well, that's because correlation is on a scale from negative one to one including negative one and one. Anything uh, closer to one or closer to negative one is actually stronger. So the closer we get to a value of one, the stronger the relationship in a positive direction. The closer we get to negative one, the stronger the relationship in a negative direction. If your data is, which again is very unlikely in the real world, but if your data is a perfect straight line that is going up, it would have a correlation of one. If it's a perfect straight line that's going down, it'd have a correlation of negative one. But for anything that has a little bit of scatter to it, it's going to be somewhere in between negative one and one. Now, the closer the correlation value gets to zero, the weaker the relationship is. Anything from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 is probably on the weaker side. We like to see strength or, or using that word strong when we are above positive 0.5 or below negative 0.5. Now, the other cool thing about correlation is that it has no units. So don't ever put units on it either. It's not like the units are inches or feet or miles or anything like that. It's just a numerical value that tells you how strong that relationship is between two quantitative variables. But I have to mention this one more time. They need to be linear. Now, there is a pretty complicated formula to find in correlation, which I'm not even going to waste your time showing because you're never going to use it. The correlation will either be given to you or you could easily calculate it on a calculator. Let's take a look at some examples of scatter plots and the correlation that measures the strength of them. Now, here we see a scatter plot looking at the weight of a sample of people and the number of steps they take per day. So maybe we took a large sample of people. We asked them what their weight was, then we had them use some type of tracker to see how many steps they take per day. Here we see a linear relationship, but we almost see a horizontal line. We don't see anything major happening. In fact, we don't even see positive or negative. If anything, it might be slightly positive. That's actually evident through the correlation, which is 0.062. So again, it's positive. So it does show that if you are heavier, the number of steps that you take per day goes up, but it's not a very strong relationship at all. In fact, it's extremely, extremely weak because it's close to zero. And that actually makes sense because the fact that we see a horizontal line here means that as the weight goes up, the number of steps you take doesn't go up or down showing that they're not related whatsoever. Here is another scatter plot looking at several houses. And we're looking at the size of the house in square feet and the price of the house in thousands of dollars. Now here we see a very positive linear pattern and corresponding such it has a very strong correlation. Notice its correlation value is first positive because the bigger the house, the more expensive it costs, but it's also very, very close to one, which shows that it is extremely, extremely strong because those dots are clearly forming a positive linear relationship. Now, here we see another scatter plot looking at the IQ of a sample of people and how long it takes them to complete an online dissection of a frog. So basically, here we had a bunch of high school students. We measured their IQ and how long it took them to complete this online dissection. 
Now, we definitely see a negative relationship. We definitely see that the smarter the kids are, the faster or the lower the time it took them. But it's not perfect. It's not extremely strong. We definitely see quite a bit of scatter. And that is why we see a correlation value of negative 0.621. Negative because it's clearly going down. That's the direction. But 0.62 is, it's on the stronger-ish side, but it's approaching weak. And again, we see that because of their, you know, the fact that there is a lot of scatter in this scatter plot. But we definitely see that negative association here. Finally, here we're looking at a sample of trees where we're looking at the diameter of each tree measured in inches and the height of each tree measured in feet. Now here we might want to take note that we see kind of two clusters. We see this cluster down here of some smaller trees, and then we see this larger cluster data up here. But if we're looking at the overall pattern of all the data, it does appear to be positive. The larger the diameter of the tree, the more likely it's going to be a taller tree. That kind of makes sense. And we see the correlation here is 0.773, which again is positive and pretty strong. It's not, you know, close to one, like a 0.9, which would be very strong, but it's definitely somewhat strong. Now, the other thing I want to make sure I notice or tell you guys about in all of the scatter plots we looked at is none of them were perfect straight lines. A perfect straight line is very rare to see. So please make sure that when we look at a scatter plot, we're not looking for perfect linear. We're looking for something that is, well approximately linear or somewhat straight meaning that it's somewhat linear it's not perfect but in all three of these examples it's somewhat forming a line it's definitely not forming a clear curve and that's when we're going to definitely want to use correlation to measure the strength one last final note here a perceived or real relationship between two quantitative variables does not mean that one variable causes the other variable to change or occur. This is really important for you to understand that even if you have a very strong correlation, that does not imply causation between the two variables.